13. Brother Jesse, uh, Brother Clark Heron, who preached for us last Wednesday night, asked Brother Jesse to preach for him tonight down at Grace Baptist Church in Eatonton, Georgia. And uh, so that's where he and Kelly are tonight. Uh, she's playing and singing. And he's preaching down there. Let's read. Um, let's start reading in verse number 12, if we will, of Romans 13. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. That's, uh, that's good preaching right there. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on, and there's, there's the key phrase to the night, let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on, there's that similar phrase again, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now, you know, I'm going to preach a few minutes tonight. I'm not sure how much I'm, I don't normally go by notes too much. I don't preach topical too much. I, I usually preach expository verse by verse, but tonight I'm going to do a little bit different, I think, although there's some really, really, really good stuff in those three verses I read uh, that we could hit for a few minutes. But you know, I mean, really do pray for our country, you know, folks. I mean, um, pray for the world, period. I mean, globally, we morally are bankrupt. We are politically in a mess. Uh, nations are fighting nations. Israel is is getting in a position that I believe the Bible says she'll be in, and that is that there's going to be nobody to help Israel. Okay? Amen? Hey, y'all. Hey, man. Our crowd just increased, increased by 25%. Amen? Praise the Lord. Okay? But um, if, if you know anything about the Bible, church, and I haven't really preached on it in a while. I probably need to sometime. But in the last days, when the end of the times are here, uh, Israel is going to be by herself. You say, now, preacher... President Trump and we are standing with him, I, I, and I, and be honest with you, I'm proud of that. And as long as we stand with Israel, I think we'll still be okay, because God made a promise. He said He would curse those that curse Israel, and He would bless those that bless Israel. So um, I'm glad President Trump actually has been a real big time pro-Israel president. Uh, he stood with them on every situation. And uh, uh, to get political just a minute, the other side hasn't. Let's just face facts. they very anti-Semitic, some of the congresswomen and uh, the men. And, and, you know, some of those are very anti-Semitic, pro-Palestinian. If you're pro-Palestinian, you're anti-Israel because the Palestines hate Israel and want to destroy Israel and steal their land. That's what's going on over there. But the Bible talks about in the end times. So anyway, pray for our country. Pray for the world. Uh, it, it's just really, uh, it's heading to what the Bible said. Uh, I'm, I'm 65 years old, got saved uh, 48 years ago. And I reckon, I, I, I remember, Brother Jim, I remember hearing those old-fashioned Old timey preachers. Matter I remember he still may be alive now. I know he went the other way a little little bit too much for me in some areas. But how many of y'all have ever heard Jack Van Empey speak? Uh, Jack Van Empey was he majored on prophecy. And he really even did back in the sixties and seventies. And I remember actually going to a Jacksonville Coliseum in Jacksonville, Florida. I was I think I was uh, I was in Bible college because a bunch of us preacher boys went down there, and Jack Van Impey came 
and did a prophecy crusade. And he had charts. He went over the charts and everything, you know, and he showed what we're talking about. So things are headed what the Bible said they're going to be. And, and I hate to say this, but according to what the Bible says, nobody is going to be standing with Israel when it happens. And if you look on the map at Israel in the Middle East, it just don't make sense that little two-by-four nation that everybody hates is still surviving. But, but they are, and God said they would. Anyway, pray for our country, pray for the world. But get back to our, our verse we read here in verse number 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. You know, you know church, I, I just talked about the world and the coming times, and I talked about prophecy and all of that. Uh, I don't think we have a long time to do a lot. I'll be honest with you. I was up in Clemson, South Carolina, spending uh, a night and a day with my son and daughter-in-law and grandkids a few weeks ago. A little Parker, he's three years old, and I was just, I caught myself looking at him and thinking to myself, I don't think he'll ever make adulthood before Jesus comes back. I really don't. I mean, I really, you say, well, I'm just telling you, I really don't believe that. And I think what will happen is, and those great preachers back in the 70s said this, Jack Van Impey said it, Leonard Ravenhill said it, R.G. Lee said it, B.R. Lakin said it, Lester Roloff said it. A lot of those great men said what would happen is America would destroy herself from within. Does that, does that sound familiar? Can you watch the news if you watch it every night and see we're, we're imploding that means we're blowing up from within. That's what we're doing. See, our, our army and our Navy and our Marines and our Air Force, and, and by, by the way, church, don't, don't, don't let none of these liberals and these idiots deceive you. They don't, nobody want none of us militarily. Trust me now. They don't. They, they just don't. You, you hear me? Militarily, we're, we're the class of the world, I can tell you. Um, but... If we continue to implode from within, we're going to destroy ourselves. And what you have is a generation. I'm, I was looking at Brother Joe and them came in with a little boy. And I just thought about their generation. I just, Brother Joe, I, I, I don't want to be a doomsday preacher. But I just don't think they'll make adulthood before Jesus comes back. I really don't, church. So you say, preacher, so what should we do? We should do what we can while we can. You see what he said right there? He, look what he said. He said, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Otherwise, you better wake up, church. You better wake up and realize you've only got a little while to do it. Then it says, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Now, here's the phrase I want to preach on a few minutes, the next phrase. And let us put on the armor of light. Now, that word armor is, is an interesting word. It's used multiple times in the Bible. And I think we know what the word armor talks about. It started a long, long time ago when uh, armies would wear metal or whatever they could wear to protect themselves. In warfare, that's what armor is. Armor protects you is what it does, okay? It's not this coronavirus, and I'm not, I'm not belittling nothing, trust me. And I made jokes a little bit about it, but it's not, it's not a light thing. I, I'll admit this right now. I don't really know, though, who to believe totally. Because one side is saying the flu's worse, pneumonia's worse. One side is saying... It's catastrophic and going to ruin the whole world. And I'm just being honest with you. I've kind of listened to both sides a, a few nights. And I, I, I just, you don't know the truth? I don't know right now. I just say it like it is. But I know who does know. Okay? Brother Bob. I think, I think it's worse than both of them is uh, the way people Sure. Oh, well, yeah. And that's what they're wanting right now, though. See, one side is wanting the panic. They're wanting the chaos. They're wanting the president in America to look bad.
They, they, they want, and it's sad to say, but they wouldn't ever admit this. But it don't matter what they have to do. It don't matter what they have to do to make one side look bad or the other. They'll take anything. Now, the coronavirus, again, I, I don't know. I'm like, and I know they said if you're over 60 and you have heart failure or immune problems, you're more susceptible to it. Uh, Hannity said, I think last night, I was coming home from the store one night to Monday or Tuesday night, and I had Fox News radio on, and he said that the average age of people dying was 80 years old. Now that, that's hard to believe, but that's what he said. But, but, to, but to, I thought about that, to average 80. Think about that. That means almost everybody that's died with it is 80 or above. Because see, if you have a 70-year-old and a 90-year-old, you've got an 80 average. You see what I'm talking about? You've got a 70 and 90, that's an 80 average. So I don't know, but I'm just saying this. Guess who does know? And guess who ultimately is going to protect you and I? Should we be wise? Sure we should. I, I, I believe we should be wise. Uh, I, I mean, if you've traveled on an airplane like Brother Greg, or you're, you're, you've been exposed to maybe some of the... I, I don't have any problem with quarantining or, or, or sanitizing or whatever, but I'm trying to tell you all, I've never put my trust in that stuff. I've always put it in God. And God can protect me, and God can take care of me, and God can protect you. Because see, here's what they're going to want. I'm telling you where it's headed. They're going to want, I saw the thing today, they're going to want churches to close down. So I heard that today. One of the things they're pushing is schools, that's one thing, and churches is another one. So let's shut your education down, and let's shut your touch with God down. Well, that's going to help the country, isn't it? Amen? I mean, you know, you, you, you know, I'm just saying that we've got to take precautions and we've got to do whatever, but I'm ultimately trusting God, and I want to put on the armor, okay? And, and that means what you do is you prepare yourself. Follow me now. To put on armor, you have to prepare yourself. So that means you're going to battle, you're going to a war, you're going to whatever, you're going to to fight someone else, and you've got to prepare yourself. See, the Apostle Paul talks about it in Ephesians 6. He said, put on the whole armor of God. And he spells out what the armor of God is. And I'm telling you, ultimately, that's what we've got to trust in. I mean, God has to protect. God has blessed this country, no matter what some of the idiots say, for 250 years. And I'll tell you why he has. Because we were, despite what the idiots say, you say you shouldn't say idiots, then you don't say it when you preach about it. But they're idiots to me to say this country wasn't founded on Christianity. They're idiots to say that this country's founders were racist and monarchist. Do you realize one statement they made about George Washington, he could have been a king. Do you know they said he was so popular because of the winning the war and doing what he did that he could have been a king? What did George Washington say? George Washington said, we just came out of that, guys. We don't want to go back into that. I'll serve eight years and that's it or whatever. Matter of fact, I read a story years ago about when he and the second president was inaugurated that day. They were in the, they were, where, where it happened that there. And the, the president, the second president, turned to George Washington and said, after you, Mr. President. And George Washington said, no, sir. I'm not the president anymore. After you, Mr. President. See, see, this country was founded on that. Do you hear me? Our schools of higher learning that are now bastions of liberalism and stupidity, you say, preacher, I'm just being honest. I mean, it ain't hate speech, it's just honesty. Our schools have lost their minds. 
But you know why? They're, I mean, folks, come on. We're legalizing drugs. We're going to decriminalize drug possession. Do you realize? And I thought Brother Bob Water was going to say something. I think I'll say it now. We worry about guns killing people. We're worried about the coronavirus killing people. We're worried about the flu killing people. We're worried about pneumonia killing people. Guess what kills more people in America every year? Huh? Just take a, take a shot. What? It's high, but it ain't the highest. No, sir. Alcohol. They estimate last year, 2019, and see, you don't even know some of the deaths. Some of the deaths wasn't even proven that it was alcohol, but it was. They said for sure there was 200,000 deaths due to alcohol last year. Did you hear the number? Listen to this, church. Almost 10 times what the flu and pneumonia killed. Alcohol did. Huh? Brother Joe Watkins is a deputy coroner. He had three calls last week in two days. There was a 28-year-old man, a 29-year-old man, and a 35-year-old woman. You know what all three of them was? Drug overdose. But we're saying let's legalize it. Let's don't slow it down and stop it. Let's make it more available. I'm telling you, but we've lost our minds. But do you know what our schools were started on? You know Princeton University, Ivy League school, cost about a quarter million dollars to go one year there or two years or whatever. Do you know what it was first called? Princeton Theological Seminary. You know what Yale University was called? Yale School of Divinity. You ever heard of Brown University? That was a Baptist university. You ever heard of Wake Forest? That was a Baptist university. You know why? Because our country was steeped in it, and God blessed our country. And we, you see these flags right here? See all these mission flags? Guess who has sent the most missionaries out? It's not even in the ball game against America. We sent out more missionaries than any countries combined have. And I'm saying God has blessed us for it. How many of y'all agree with that? Say amen. Huh? But we're walking away from it, church. But you've got to put on the armor. I remember I was thinking about this sermon today. Years ago, Brother Jim, you'd be the only one that probably remember this. Maybe Eddie if he's here. Uh, I, don't, I don't think nobody else remember this. My wife would. Um. Remember when paint gun became, man, it went crazy about it? I mean, just, it like hit the market. And my son had to have a $79 gun. And Danny Witzel's son, Zach, he had to have a $199 gun because Danny's on a different financial level than me. But one Sunday afternoon, I went over to Danny Witzel's house to eat lunch with him. And Jeremy and Zach said, let's go play paint ball outside I said okay I had never I had never done it I didn't know nothing about it all I know is you put this thing in the gun and you pulled it and shot and it splattered they gave me <laughs> them little cheap shot cowards they gave me a little old thing that covered about this much of me they had arm pads on shoulders protected mask on we went in the backyard, Matthew. Said, okay, go get behind the tree. Boy, went behind that tree, Brother Joe. And Zach and Jeremy was aimed right at me. I stuck my head out, and I got splattered son about 16 times. I'm talking about pop, 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 pop. It made me mad because it hurt. I said, if y'all don't stop, I'll beat both of your bottom ends. I'm through with this, and I threw the gun down. I ain't never played it since then. Man, I had paint here, 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 here. I turned and hit run. I had it all over my back. They plastered me. I wasn't prepared, Brother Joe. I didn't have my armor on. 
And they were, I mean, I knew something was wrong when, they, when Zach walked out of the house and he, he, he walked like this because he had so much stuff on. And I'm going, why does he need that? Pop, 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 pop. I knew. About 16 pops I knew, I promise you. See, we, we laugh at that. But listen to me, church. That's what we do spiritually. We don't put on the armor of God. And we go out there, and the devil just pop, 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 pop. He just plasters us. Because see, the Bible says that we're to watch out for the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, I heard Brother Fisher preach a sermon years ago, Toro, Toro, about bullfighting in Spain. And he talked about how they kill the bull slowly. Because they, they hold the thing out, and every time he goes at it, they shoot something in him. And they keep shooting it in him. And they keep shooting it in the bull. And after a few minutes, the bull goes, bam. He's dead. He didn't even feel some of the shots. Church, it said to put on the armor of light. Say, preacher, how do I put on the armor? Come on. Turn to Ephesians 6 a minute. It's just so simple. It's spelled out right here in Ephesians 6 for us. I mean, if you can't see this, you're just not, you're not thinking or looking like you should. Look at Ephesians 6. Start reading in verse number 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Watch what it says now. Watch what it says. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know the word wiles means? Tricks. Deception. Hmm? Yeah. The devil sits out there and you step out behind that tree spiritually. He goes pop, 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 pop. And before you know it, you're plastered. And you're discouraged, and you're wanting to quit, and you want to throw in the towel, and you get so frustrated and down. He says, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you, watch this now, the whole armor of God. And it says it again, that ye may be able. Why do you have to have the armor? You have to have the armor to stand against the devil. Huh? Why do you think army guys use camo? Huh? They, they, they don't want to be like deer hunters. Deer hunters want to be seen where you don't get shot. Those guys don't. They, they wear camo because they fit in the terrain. They're not easy to see. How many times have we seen in Vietnam and Korea and, and all your wars basically through the years, and we've seen enemies walk right by somebody that couldn't even see them. And if they didn't move, they wouldn't even know they were there. That's what we've got to do, church. We've got to put on spiritual camo. We can't just bounce out there and say, here I am. Pop, 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 pop. Mm. I don't want to step out there no more. Got to put on the armor of God. How do you put on the armor of God, preacher? It says here, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Where does truth come from? Truth comes from the Word of God. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Yeah. You protect your chest. You protect and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pre preacher, how do I get my spiritual armor on? You get in the Word of God. You say, preacher, this is simple, church. 
Do you hear me? It's simple. It really is. The devil wants to complicate it. This is your spiritual armor. This is your protection. See, the reason I'm not worried about it, like I told you, I mean, I, I pray for my grandkids to get saved. I pray for them, for God to protect them. But I'm trusting God more than I am the government and more than I am their principles. I mean, they're, they're protective things they do. I'm trusting God. That's who I'm trusting. Who does the missionary trust in the jungles of Africa? Who does the missionaries trust in Mexico where they're around the drug cartel who chop heads off and hang people? Uh, who do they trust? Huh? Who do they trust, Matthew? Who takes care of them? Who protects the missionary in South America? Who protects the missionary, uh, the missionary in Spain? Who protects the one in China who goes around at night and has to sneak around and have church in the basement and has to hide and go in one at a time, a separate time? Who protects them? God does. Your best protection is God. Huh? I used to walk in the bedroom, my kids, uh, so many times I did this, and some of y'all probably have too. I walked in there so many times, and they were asleep. And so many times I said, Lord, I can't protect them from what's out there tomorrow. I can't seclude them. I can't hide them in a cave. Lord, please take care of them. Please protect them. I bet you I did that. A thousand times probably. Lord, please, your protection is what we need. And our protection spiritually is what we need. The devil is throwing those fiery darts. Choom, choom. Do you realize in our schools, now, do you realize in our public schools and our state universities what's being taught right now? Do you really, really know? You know, at eight years old now in Athens, Georgia, they're teaching, sex, they're teaching sexual courses? Huh? You know, the bathrooms are becoming unisex in some schools. There's no boys or no girls. Hmm? Hmm? It's a mess. The professors in our state universities. With, with a few exceptions, are all anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-Christian. Matter of fact, one, one young guy told me a couple of years ago, Brother Keith, he said he walked in the University of Georgia in the psychology class, and they were in there about the third or fourth day, and the teacher stood up and said, is there anybody in here that's a born-again Christian? And, 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 and admits to it. And that's, how, and that's how he said it, and admits to it. Well, about six people raised their hands in the whole class. He went to ripping them. This kid, this young guy said, Preacher, he ripped them. He ripped us up one side and down the other. I said, only an idiot believes in a God. Only an idiot believes in Jesus Christ. You say, no, oh yeah, oh yeah. A professor of psychology at the University of Georgia said that. And then what's sad, Matthew, he asked a few minutes later. He said, now how many of y'all still think you're smart for doing that? And two stood up. Just two. And he pointed this young man out and he said, son, why are you such an idiot? He said, sir, why are you? He said, I, I couldn't think a whole lot more to say. I just said back, sir, why are you? He said, I've got the Bible and God on my side. Who's on yours? He said, and God gave me some things to say. Is Darwin on your side? You believe we're a tadpole? Huh? He just, I said four or five things like that. And said, he honest to God, just shut up, walked around back to the board, and started writing stuff on the board. Never, he said, never mess with me again. But that's sad, church. That's what, that's what these kids or being hit with. Four years ago, how many of y'all know Robbie Zacharias? He's on the radio. Real good, smart, young Christian. I mean, I mean I don't, he's not my stripe in every area, but he's really brilliant. 
And he defends the cause of Christ like he's a genius. He, I'm not just saying that, he really is. He goes on state universities and debates professors, and he does like one versus seven. He does one, he's by himself, and there'll be six or seven of them. He wanted to come to North Dakota High School and do an hour and a half session, and they said no. Eight days later, they brought in a black rap group from Atlanta that did a two-hour program down there, black rappers. Yeah. We're messed up, church. We're fighting some things. But God's still big. God's still good. Amen? God's still good. But I've got to put that armor on. I've got to get the Bible. I've got to pray. I've got to go to church. This is a three-time-a-week shot for you. We just had Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, tonight. And you need every one of them. And you say, oh, I have to do this. What you did wasn't more important. I'll guarantee you the Word of God is our only armor. Do you hear me? The, the devil is throwing them fiery darts. He's putting that bow back, son. He's got you right in his crosshair. He's looking right at you, and he knows where to hit you. He knows what to hit you with. And you need church, and you need the Word of God, and you need to be on your knee. I met, I met Brother John Hurd today down here, and he came down. Just me and him prayed today. That's fine. I don't, people couldn't come, didn't come. That's fine. We came. That old man of God, I love to hear him pray. I just laid there on the ground. He, we, we was right over there, Brother Keith. And man, he got to praying, got to crying. And I got to crying. He got blessed while he's praying. That's what you got to have. That's the armor you got to put on. And your children, your grandchildren, you got to put it on them too. You got to pray for their protection. Yes, sir, you do. This virus, pneumonia, flu, I... I take flu shots, I take pneumonia shots, I do all the vaccines I can, trying to get shingles vaccine now, whatever, but they're $300 or whatever, you know. Medicare don't pay them. I found that, I thought they did, but they don't. They did, told me they didn't. I, I mean, I want to get everything I can, but I'm trusting in God. I hope tomorrow I walk out in the armor of God. I hope that when the devil gets that fire dart ready, he goes, and he goes, choom. You know, in the Romans' day, the Apostle Paul talked about the fire darts of the wicked. See, what they would do, okay, you've seen, you've seen movies and shows where they'd have archers and they'd put the, thing, the, the head on flame, right? And they'd, you know why they did that? Because when the, when the burning metal or rock hits the flesh, it goes deeper. It, it, it peels it and, and, and you know what they would do in Paul's desk what he's talking about some of this stuff they'd take leather protectors and they'd put water inside of it and they'd have leather pouches as an armor and when they shot them fiery darts and it went in there that water put that fire right away just snuff it that's what I want God to do I want to have that when, that, that, that when the devil goes Choom! I want to go it's out. But you won't get that from your own wisdom or your own mind. The Bible says, In all thy ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord and lean not unto your own ways. We're not smart enough to walk with God and be protected. But God is. You hear me? God is. Our teenagers that sit here on Sundays are Brother Keith and Tony, and some of them bring in, and I'm not being mean. They're, they're, they're going to agree with this. Some of those kids see things and hear things they shouldn't see or hear. Brother Keith, am I right? Brother Tony, am I right? Huh? You know how many times I've walked out on the bus route, whether it was in Jacksonville or Statham or Winder or Little Mexico behind? You know how many times Little Mexico, Matthew, you know how many times I literally, literally kicked hundreds of beer cans off the front porch to knock on the door? Huh? I've seen kids that told me about parties that went on 
the night before in their house. They said they went to their room and shut their door scared. Hollering, cussing, drugs, alcohol. You don't know what some of these kids see. We've lived in a we've lived in a coddled world, most of us, versus what some of these kids see. I'm telling you, that's why we've got to go get them. That's why we've got to make a difference in their lives. That's why we've got to. Your Caleb surely preach Sunday morning. See, you don't know the whole story. I do. His daddy was a drunkard, out of church, not in church or nothing. None of them were. There wasn't a single one of them in church. But a bus captain came by one Saturday and brought a couple of little blonde-headed kids, like he said. Before you know it, the daddy got saved, the mama got saved, the sons got saved. And now Tony Shirley's pastor, a new man of Baptist church in Marion, North Carolina, runs six, seven hundred on Sunday morning. Tim Shirley's pastoring in Kentucky outside of Louisville. Brother Caleb Shirley's pastoring in Russell Springs, Kentucky. Their sister and brother-in-law's pastoring in Tennessee because somebody went by on the bus route. Yeah. That's the only protection they have is what, what we, have, we offer them in God. They don't have no other protection. They don't get the protection even our kids got. They don't. They don't. This young man sitting on the front row, church, and you know, you know you're going to have a fight on your hands. You start being critical of this boy. He got his problems, but look where he came from what he's came through and what God's doing with him and not even near through yet well, how'd he make it out of that background now, his grandma loved him and he I mean she loved him and still does but it wasn't a Christian environment at all it wasn't Jesus as a main thing around there it was some rough things he told me one time he told me one time about his uncle coming in his bedroom and taking money or whatever he couldn't even protect himself some from with his stuff but he's sitting right here in the front row with a tie on, dress pants, looking sharp, ready to go for God. Huh? The only protection he's had is God. Amen? Miss Angelina, you go out there. To, you go out there for, for how long have you been going on that bus right out there? Do you know? 18 years? A long time. Every Saturday, every Sunday. Every Saturday, every Sunday. I can tell you, you can see her 50 Sunday mornings a year when she's not in Mexico or she might be sick. You know where you'll see her at? Go to Shell Station. She'll be sitting right there waiting for the bus to come by and crawl on it. Only protection they got is God. Amen? That's it. Only protection you and I have is God. Do you hear me? The armor of God is the only protection we have. This is it right here. It is. You say, well, coronavirus wipes part of the world out, the finances go down. The Bible said, I've not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. That's what God said. Let me ask you a question. Did Egypt go through all the plagues? Remember the, how many, ten plagues, right? Wasn't Israel right next to them? In case you didn't know, what's this? Israel, Egypt was right here. Goshen was right here. But none of the plagues went in Goshen. None of their cattle died. None of their kids got sick. None of their kids died. All their firstborn died. Many of their people died. All their cattle died almost. Their rivers turned to blood, but their river didn't. Their children didn't. What was the difference? Well, in between them was God. That's, that's the main point I want to get across. Amen? Amen? Go out there tomorrow in the armor of God and just say, Lord... It's Egypt out here, and it's dark out here, and it's plagues out here, and it's, 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 
I mean, a plague hit Israel one time, and, and people were dying, and God said, take your brazen serpent and just hold it up in the air, and all you have to do is just look at that brazen serpent, and all that plague around you won't mess with you. Because God said, I'll take care of you. The devil throws them fiery darts, draws that bow back, puts that spiritual demonic gun on you. You better have some protection on. You hear me? You better have that armor. Put on the armor of light. You hear that word? I didn't get to preach on that. It's another time that'll hurt. I never got past point one, did I? I never did hard. But see, a good thing about me, I'm not strapped to an outline. I ain't got to cover all seven. I don't really care. I covered one. I'll cover the next six some other time. But armor of light. Light repels darkness. Matthew, real quick, just this is it. We're through. Uh, walk out where the light switch is for him real quick. Hurry up. Let's go. Come on. Cut all the lights off. Cut every light off. Cut these off. Watch what light does to darkness. Always. Cut them all off. Cut the screens off. I want all the lights off. Everything off. Ben, clip them. Clip it. Do something quick if you can. Well, it looks good, don't it? Look how pretty that picture is. Okay. Now. Now, Matthew, cut me one light on. Hmm. Do that again. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. I didn't. Don't. Leave it off. Leave it off. Okay, I know, I know that. Now, now look, look around you right now. Uh, some of my brother Jim, can you tell me what color shirt Lee Snodgrass is wearing? Brother Lee, can you tell me what color shirt Brother Jim's wearing? I'm serious now. This ain't playing time. This is a serious point. Can you tell me what kind of shirt Brother Jim's wearing? Cut the lights on. Now look over there. Y'all, please. I'm trying to be serious. Now, now look over there. Can you see now? See what light does to darkness? Or are you paying attention? Please, the ones that are, listen to me. Light repels darkness. Light penetrates darkness. Darkness can't stand to light. So if we've got the armor of light on and we're walking out here in this world tomorrow, then we, the Lord and the armor of light will repel whatever the devil throws at us. Amen? Okay, let's stand. Leave the lights on. <laughs> God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus... Jesus, <laughs> let's, let's pray. Be here Sunday morning. Brother Greg, you got a brother like this? Is he? Are you the oldest or youngest? You're the baby. Well, you don't, you don't, that's you doing that. See, that's the baby doing that. That's what babies do. Okay. Brother Greg, pray for us. Because there's 